But at a certain point, you just have to say no. Like, you just have to say, I am going to do this, whether it is e an easy process or a difficult process. I'm going to make time every single day to work towards this goal. Good morning, girlies, and welcome to my new apartment and my channel, if you're new. My name is Taylor, founder and designer of NYTC by Taylor, or Not Your Grandma's Crochet. <laughs> and yes, I hinted in yesterday's vlog that I moved, but then yesterday ended up being a complete snowball of craziness. And so today we can talk about all the new life updates that are happening, including getting my own space. Okay, so just to like rant a little about yesterday while I make my coffee. Yesterday was supposed to be a pretty chill in the apartment type day. I did have a little bit of, actually quite a bit of work to do, but it was like a manageable amount considering I was gonna be in the house all day. And I started pretty early, you know, early in the morning. Well, one of my other jobs is I'm a social media manager for a few different brands, organizations, and individuals. And in, at the very end of October, I got a new client. Now, with this client, initially things were going very well. They were happy with the content that I was producing for them. Typically with my clients, I have a month where I just send them drafts so they know what my content looks like or what the content I plan on producing for them looks like. They can approve my style and then for the duration of our contract, I don't really send them the content on a daily basis to be approved. Sometimes if they're asking for like a special event to be, you know, discussed or whatever, I might send them the final graphic, but it's not really an ask. Now these clients are a little bit... I would say unorganized in the sense that I can't just look online and pull content. I kind of have to be in constant communication with them. And they decided that they wanted me to send them the content to get approved before posting. Not an issue, I didn't think. But for some reason, while they initially liked the content, as November progressed, they started to not like the content, and then it became a whole thing. They added someone new to the team that was approving the content, and it was just like a mess. And so we've had a few meetings now, both like communication on email as well as over Zoom, and I thought that things were going to be, you know, moving into a positive direction. And then yesterday at like four o'clock in the morning, they were like, okay, we want to do this post. Like, we want the post to say this. I was like, okay, cool. And they want to post it on Friday, yesterday. So I was like, okay, cool, I can do that. And I, you know, I'm going through my morning. I'm finishing up the first thing that I need to do, which is for a completely different client, but it was my priority. And then my dad calls wanting to do something, so I'm like, Ugh, okay, like I can do this on the road as long as I'm not the one driving, whatever. So I get the graphic done in like decent amount of time, like one-ish, and I want to be posting around three to six. Now these clients are away at a conference, like this whole timeline is not ideal because obviously they're busy and I'm kind of busy and wasn't planning on doing work for them today necessarily. But here nor there. I send them the graphic, they respond pretty quickly that they don't like the graphic and that they want addition to me. And so I make an addition, I send it to them and they were like, no, actually, we want it like this. Basically they call that the graphic boring and not creative, not modern, whatever. At this point, I'm not really in my feelings because I understand like their humor and like their personality that like I'm not really taking it personal, but I am just kind of like, okay, like how do I, let me just like go back to the drawing board. So I, while I'm going back to the drawing board, they're sending me this, this other graphic that they made and they're like, I made this in five minutes. So I don't understand why you can't make something that looks like this. The graphic that they sent me was something that never in my wildest dreams would I have ever come up with. 
mostly because I don't understand the humor in their industry so I wouldn't have even thought it would be appropriate I guess to use that I don't know here nor there now I'm starting to feel a little bit panicked because now it's like three o'clock I wanted to post the graphic between three to six and to even put more into context, I am sitting at the tire shop with my brother because I got stuff there with him for three hours. But here nor there, I brought my laptop. I was able to get work done. Whatever. So now I'm on the phone with my mom. And I'm like, I, I hear what they're saying. I understand that the first graphic wasn't up to par, but like I am emotionally not doing well. <laughs> like, it was just chaos. And so my mom was like, okay, I hear what you're saying. To be honest, I didn't really love your first graphic. Let's come up with something based on what they sent. So on the phone for like, I don't know, maybe 40, 30 to 40 minutes, we end up sending them two things and they never respond. It's the next day and they never responded. So I just feel like I've spent so much time on them on their content on making these different things that it's a little bit disappointing to spend that time and not get to post because i can't even show them the analytics that hey this pose actually would have done pretty well had you green lighted it you know and my time was wasted i ended up not finishing my work for the rest of the day because i was so drained from dealing with that and now it's saturday and i still have quite a bit of work to do so that's the headspace that I'm in right now. Not to mention, I technically have a post that needs to be approved for tomorrow that they just sent me notes for yesterday that I'm going to have to work on today and see if they'll approve that one for tomorrow. So we have a meeting on Monday. We will see how it goes. I'm just kind of like, at a it is what it is type situation at this current moment i'm definitely just kind of feeling um like a lot has happened this year between graduating um starting to work my various jobs moving into my own apartment going to europe or out of the country for the first time period trying to run my business now outside of college it's been a lot but this month i'm really committed to getting things back on track putting my business back as priority because i do kind of feel like i put it on the back burner just because there were so many other things that i was doing but when i really sit down and think like the thing that i get the most enjoyment from is my business like that just is the facts I don't mind doing the social media stuff that I do, and I've learned a lot of skills by doing it. However, at the end of the day, what I want to be doing, not only for myself, but for others, is crocheting. So, hopefully this next month I can feel like a bit more balanced with that desire. That's my hope, at least and that starts with getting my studio area fixed up because if you could see what i can see actually i can show you yesterday like i said was such a situation that like the kitchen has never looked worse but you don't even need to see that like actually what is going on here all that yarn is from the yarn that i unbagged in yesterday's vlog and then yesterday happened and I had no time to organize. So that's what we're doing right now. Okay, so while I organize all this yarn, I think I'm going to color code it because it's going to have to go up back on the shelf. Anyways, let's talk about the past few months. So the last time that you guys really saw me, like the last time I was really vlogging, was when I was pet sitting for my friend and before I left for Europe. So you guys saw me back. <laughs> I really wanted to make that packing video like a lot more entertaining, but if you couldn't tell, it was very chaotic. I had gotten sick, like I ate gluten, so I had an allergic reaction right before I was supposed to leave. And it just made all the events of both the trip in some instances 
but more importantly packing for the trip which is very difficult and whatever whatever so anyways we go to Paris and Milan the day that I come back is the same day that my boyfriend comes back to Atlanta and his birthday was that weekend as well as we were starting to look at apartments because after living like essentially over the summer it was me him my mom my brother all at my mom's house and it was completely an unintentional unintentional arrangement like when i invited my boyfriend to come for my birthday i never i guess it wasn't really like a a plot on my hand to be like Ooh, let me get him to be here for the next three months it just kind of made sense because of the work that we do that i mean it made sense for him to be there that being said it was just not enough space for me and him and plus i think it's really important even though living on my own definitely comes with its own challenges it's definitely financially more constricting and whatnot but i just learned from college that it's important for me to have just a little bit of space from my family because i can definitely easily like become swallowed up by that and just get overwhelmed and so having my own space to kind of like grow in adulthood has been nice for this season so anyways we start looking at apartments and it honestly was kind of a challenge <laughs> because since i live like so in the city in atlanta it was and this is what i've known for the past 10 to 12 years i think i wanted of course to continue living pretty close to the city and i it was hard to find something in our budget that we liked that made sense and so after like looking at i want to say like 15 different places which that process was so annoying because literally you would book a tour they would say they have some available you would go in and be like okay i want to tour your two bedroom two bathroom units and they would be like oh we don't have any available to tour so then why am i here what why am i here to have this conversation with you in person i don't want to do that that's not necessary for me so anyways that was very just such a weird situation i'm very thankful for the place that we did end up finding it was a pretty quick well they were kind of doing a little bit of foolishness because like initially we were going to move in on like a saturday or monday and then they hadn't finished processing all of our documents and then they're like okay when is the next day you would like to move in so we were like okay let's do this upcoming saturday and they didn't tell us until like a few days before that date that we couldn't move in on the weekend and then we were going to move in on tuesday and then they were like oh the apartment's not fully finished even though we did see the apartment when we toured but they were just doing a little bit of work to it so anyways now they <laughs> At that point they were like yeah the apartment's not fully finished so let's move you guys in on friday then the thursday before we we're supposed to move in the person calls me and was like hey is, is there any way possible that we could delay or move in one more time and i was like absolutely not the truck has been rented my things are not packed at this point but about to be packed tonight no you cannot move our date <laughs> and so thankfully they were able to get themselves sorted out i love this yard like i i don't know why i didn't get this when i initially was getting yarn and i will be getting more of this yarn this is beautiful but anyways i was just kind of like really confused about that but whatever we end up that night I pack up all my stuff because honestly I was definitely um what's the word I was definitely kind of procrastinating 
packing in a sense just because i mean that is my nature at the end of the day but it was kind of like to an even larger scale which i couldn't quite understand i think part of it was like it still didn't feel real that i was actually moving out and then once it did set in that i was actually moving out i i was so caught up in like actually wanting to move out that i I've never really sat down to think about the fact that oh wow I'm like actually moving out of my family home and like god willingly I will never be moving back into my family home and so yeah it took me a little bit to finally have that realization and once I did I wouldn't say I got emotional at all because I truly believe that like based on my experience at college and everything, that this was the right move for me. But it was kind of just like a, oh. So anyways, we pack up, we move everything in. The apartment looks pretty good. The only thing we really have left to do is to hang up artwork. We have so much artwork, but we just have it set down to hang everything up because that's gonna be such a process. So yeah, we moved like a, mid October ish and we're working if you don't know besides social media one of my other jobs is working for this new magazine called the bold maven I do the social media I'm kind of like a creative director for the video and photo shoots and I also edit all of the YouTube videos so that's probably like the thing that takes up the majority of my time it probably goes the bold maven crochet and then my social media work at least that's how it's supposed to go except in november as i discussed earlier it didn't quite go that way but yeah i really have enjoyed our new space i will hopefully after i organize all this yarn be able to show you guys around my studio which i really enjoyed having a studio like you guys don't understand since i started to crochet almost 77 years ago i've always been confined to my bedroom like i am crocheting in my bed i'm looking at all the things in my bedroom and i'm turning my bedroom into a crochet studio of sorts the fact that i can go to sleep at night not surrounded by yarn it does wonders for your sleep <laughs> so it's been really nice to be able to have some separation from <laughs> my work even just like my social media work like being able to have this desk right here which is where I primarily do my work oh it has done wonders it has truly done wonders that is something that I would, would be hard to give up in the future I mean not that my boyfriend would want our room to become my crochet studio because that would be ridiculous but here nor there I'm very happy to have it I feel like life in general has just been really wild, especially in October with everything that's going on <laughs> in the world. It's been, I felt like for a period there, I just was glued to my phone. Someone described it as like, they just felt like if they were looking away from their phone, that they were almost like doing an injustice to like the people who are trying to share their stories and like, make sure that they essentially like that their narrative stays relevant and being pushed and yeah i was definitely uh, <laughs> a person who felt similar to that and while things are not really any better currently i am at least trying to make a i feel bad for unraveling this but it is what it is but i am trying to just figure out ways that i can i don't know still stay up to date because oh my gosh when i was at the tire shop that was probably the first time that i was listening to like regular news the rhetoric the propaganda mm -mm. so anyways that was Wow, my friend is so smart. Did she literally crochet this in? I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense for sure. And it definitely keeps all the, yeah, that's clean. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, I think that definitely, like, beside 
between work and just constantly being on TikTok, trying to make sure that I was staying informed was a lot. And then November became a lot because of whatever, whatever. I will say I did kind of get back on track with crochet stuff in November. I was posting a little bit more regularly. Um, I was going live more regularly, which I really enjoy going live. I feel like it's always a mixed bag of like who shows up, but in general, it is pretty fun and entertaining to like actually interact with people. However, sometimes I'm like on there just blabbering away about my life. And I realized that I don't know too much about the people <laughs> that are commenting. And so like afterwards, I'll like click on their profiles and be like, oh, like this was the person that I had a five to 10 minute long conversation about whatever with so that's always interesting i feel like probably the last major thing that has happened would be my sale that i attempted to have essentially about i want to say maybe even like two weeks before black friday slash small business saturday i was like you know wanting to definitely increase the website views that I've had because to be honest this year has definitely been my lightest year sales wise like I have made sales this year which I'm thankful for but it has not been it's been a while since I've gotten a sale and I haven't gotten a sale on my new collection and so I was like you know with my inconsistencies and like being away I definitely haven't been advertising the products to the best ability and then I completely forgot that I have a entire list of email subscribers that I could be utilizing and so I was like okay let's do a big push to rejuvenate my website rejuvenate my business and just like kind of like reintroduce hey these products are live. Now, when I initially launched, there were a few items that I wanted to include in the launch that I just didn't have the time to do so. Those were my hair accessories, which is the jumbo scrunchie, the, I think I called the medium scrunchie or regular scrunchie, no, medium scrunchie, a bandana, and then the regular NYGC cardigan and the cropped NYGC cardigan. Those are kind of like my um, like most basic brand staples. I don't have my scrunchie in right now, but typically I'm always wearing a scrunchie. If you see a black scrunchie in my hair, I crochet that. And so it just felt right to have that on my website. And then my cardigans are, my NYGC cardigans are my staple cardigan. I've sold plenty of those in the past and those are the ones that I pretty much wear the most often. So anyways, I knew that I wanted to add those to the website. I also knew that I wanted to take new brand photos, like product photos, because the ones that I took, me and my boyfriend literally took those at 6 a.m. the day that I launched my website initially in April. <laughs> so they were definitely good, but <laughs> considering everything, but they weren't. I don't feel like they necessarily showed the products in like the best light because it was in like a dimly lit hallway in our dorm, you yeah. know? So I was like, okay, let me figure out these hair accessories. Let me also figure out updating the website just a tad bit and to maybe incentivize people to check it out even more. Let's do a sale. Now sales are controversial topics in the crochet world for good reason because at the end of the day whether i sell you the product for sixty dollars or a hundred and twenty dollars if it takes me 12 hours to do it's gonna take me 12 hours to do so do i want to be paid at least ten dollars for my time or do i want to get paid 50 cents for my time <laughs> but i was kind of like you know i know there was a lot of potentially shock with my price increase i feel like i've always thanks to my boyfriend kept my prices moderately like at a moderate level except for when i initially launched the bags that was just terrible terrible but in general with the crochet stuff i've always usually kept it at like a moderate level but 
now that I've been in the game for a little bit, moderate, ain't gonna quite cut it for how long some of my pieces take and whatever, whatever. So I was like, let me do a sell. I'll do 15% off site-wide and then I'll do free shipping. And I was like, I've already been considering doing free shipping because to be honest, like shipping doesn't really cost that much for the system that I use. Like most orders don't really go over $8 shipping. So I was like, let me do that. Ooh, speaking of which, I need to make a change to the website. But anyways, I was like, let me offer that. And then because I was seeing so much about people shading people who only did 15% off, I was like, okay, what's an extra thing I can do to offer them a slightly bigger discount, but make them work for it a little bit. So I was like, okay, I'll do an incentive on my Instagram where if you tag a friend, tag your favorite small business because this was supposed to be my small business Saturday so and you also um share the post to your story I would send you a code for an extra 20% off so technically speaking on my website a person was el eligible for 35% off plus free shipping now I I really respect the small businesses that I follow, like the small businesses that I follow that are in like more of the 100k following range. So like they've been consistently doing this, they consistently get sales, and they're consistently marketing and promoting their business. Because wow, the planning that it requires, especially if you're a one woman show, like I was, it was literally, um, the Wednesday before my sale, and I'm like, I haven't even finished the medium scrunchie. And I still am considering redoing the ties to the tied up cardigan. And so by Thursday, I'm like, oh gosh, I still have work to do and I need to be promoting it. But I can't really promote if I'm busy creating. And then by Friday, I'm like, oh shoot, <laughs> I have more things to do and I haven't even taken these photos. And so Saturday, I had a shoot for the magazine, and I also was hosting a Friendsgiving. <laughs> and I, at that point, thankfully, well, okay, Friday, me and my boyfriend end up having, me and my boyfriend go to the Apple store on Black Friday to get him a phone that wasn't even discounted. Then we met up with my aunt who was in town just to have lunch with her. And by the time we were done with all that, it's like six o'clock. The sun is setting and I'm like, oh, by the way, we have to take all my photos for my sale tomorrow. So yeah, that was quite last minute. Then in fixing up my website, because there were a few just like general aesthetic things that I wanted to switch up. By the time I was posting my product photos on Saturday, it was five o'clock. My friend's giving was gonna start at six o'clock. And I was like, oh yeah, mm -mm, this is not happening. So I ended up delaying my sale until Sunday. And I was like, it should be fine. People asked me about the sale yesterday. So I know that people, like I've been talking about all my stories and like kind of in my posts. So people were aware that I was having a sale. When it didn't happen on Saturday, people were messaging me like, hey, did I miss a sale? Which made me feel good. Cause then I was like, no, the sale will actually be happening tomorrow, whatever, whatever. So I get all the things ready. I make the graphic about the um, extra 20% off situation. I also do like the email marketing stuff. And I post it, you guys. <clears throat> I'm not saying I get a lot of likes. In a day, on a post that's like mediocre, I probably get like 40 likes. 40 likes is like average. 32 to 40 likes. 60 likes if a post is really good. After about, gosh, how many hours? The graphic had been live for, um, let's just say eight hours. I had only gotten six likes. And even worse, on my story, I usually get anywhere from 186 views to like 230 views. Like on the most random story post I can usually count on at least like 175 story views no 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 my story my story had only gotten 17 views by the end of the day and so I was like oh 
this is how it's gonna go and to be honest this is how it always goes for myself i don't know what instagram has against me but whenever i want to have a i don't know if it's because i'm using the word sell and i need to think of another word i don't know what it is but whenever i am having a collection launch or i am having a sell suddenly instagram is like mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. no 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 your post will not do well and so, yes, I was fighting against the Instagram demons, but remember, I also had my um, email newsletter going out, and I also had TikTok. So people were going to the website, they were checking it out, but the people who I know really want something from my brand are on Instagram. So that was really disappointing, and at the end of the day, I ended up... I was too busy on Wednesday to like go through everything to take the website, take the sell stuff off. So I ended up leaving the sell active until Thursday and I did not get a single sale. And it was just kind of like, it was, it was disappointing in the sense that I felt like I had slightly been, I had been a slightly better procrastinator than usual. Like I definitely procrastinated still. And I was a little bit last minute in my decision, but not as last minute as typical. <laughs> and I don't know. It was, I'm never disappointed in not getting sales because people aren't buying. I'm always disappointed in like how things perform social media wise, just to make sure that's clear. Because I never expect people to spend however much money on my items i don't when someone appears on my website i'm never like you better put something in my cart in your cart no i am just happy that they are there and hope that they check everything out and if they see something that they like i hope that they buy it but what does disappoint me <laughs> is social media and the performance on social media and so i don't know i feel like and maybe i'm wrong about this but I feel like the issue with me and my business is not that people don't want to support my business. It's not that people don't think my prices are reasonable, not reasonable, but considering what they're getting, I don't think people are dissuaded by the price necessarily. I think that I just haven't reached my an audience of people who can afford my things right now. And so when social media, fails it's like eat how i reach these people so yeah that's kind of where i'm at right now um with the rest of this year so the rest of december what you guys will be seeing is me trying to complete the things that i have been putting off things like my personal large nygc handbag a mock set of crochet pants, my boyfriend's cardigan that I've been working on for a thousand years, and potentially like a version of the NYGC handbag. So yeah, I say all that to say that I know sometimes people, because I do it too, I look at my crochet mutuals and I'm like, oh my gosh, they must just be racking in the sales. Like their prices are so perfect and they have this much people following and like they're doing this and they're doing that. Like they must be getting constant sales. But the truth of the matter is for some of them, they are. And for some of them, some of us, we are not. It doesn't the number of followers really, it really doesn't determine much. Like I know so many people, especially on Instagram, I'm just gonna do Instagram numbers for now. But I know so many people on Instagram who have like 600 followers, their prices are very much so what they should be pricing for their crochet pieces. And they're getting more constant sales than someone with 2000 followers with the same situation. Something that I've really been reflecting on is like when I initially decided to really jump into the social media thing with my business, you know, my posts were doing so well. I'm getting like hundreds to like 200 likes on these very basic and <laughs> random posts. And I'm like, what? 
what about Taylor back then? What about those posts back then were attracting those sorts of numbers on my social media? And I think it comes down to the fact that when you when you when you start to feel like you have some things under your belt, you start to think that you have a little bit of clout. To be honest, you get a little bit lazy. Like you're kind of like I mean the numbers speak for themselves, but it's like do the numbers speak <laughs> Do they really speak for themselves? I'm not convinced that the numbers speak for themselves. I actually think that you are kind of in trying to let the numbers speak for themselves. You end up not speaking at all, you know? And so I think my goal for next year is to kind of keep well. I want to keep my business hat on because a business hat is very important I don't want it to I don't want it to fully corrupt my general crochet desire which is to crochet my is to crochet my dream closet like that is the ethos of my brand you are watching me crochet my dream closet and I hope that you want to buy something along the lines I don't think that I really achieved that this year. I mean, I have pieces that I made that literally social media has not even seen. And it's because I'm so caught up in this idea that uh, once I post it, like what's gonna happen if I don't have the listing ready on the website and if for me to have the listing ready on the website, that means I need to have timed how long it took me to make the product so that I can price it according to how long the product takes. and like all these different things I'm like oh my gosh I don't even have enough yarn in stock to recreate this this is like there's so many like a b yes no type situations that's going on in my head that's kind of blocking the freeness of just having a passion to crochet especially on Instagram I think on TikTok I'm a little bit more loose Loose is a word. Loose is a terrible word, but a little bit more, a little bit more open about the type of content that I share. And I think on YouTube, I'm kind of the same way. But Instagram, Instagram has been a challenge for me for at least the past two-ish years, and I'm really trying to get to the bottom of that so that I can stop letting that hold me back from just sharing the cool things that i make like the people that i follow that i'm most inspired by for the most part they're just posting the things that they make that they love and if they happen to end up making those things available on their website they do and it goes well it sells well because people are seeing that they truly enjoy this item that they made and so yeah positive things ended up coming from the cell not going so well and I I think it really um helped me reevaluate what crocheting means to me in a very important way and I'm really hoping that I can like really lock in on those lessons next year because <laughs> There's so much that I want to do and at the end of the day obstacles are always going to come up There's always going to be things that happen in life that make it harder for you to accomplish your goal But at a certain point you just have to say no like you just have to say I am going to do this Whether it is e an easy process or a difficult process. I'm going to make time every single day to work towards this goal and I think I'm finally at the point in my life where I'm tired of making excuses. I'm tired of letting things get in my way that are stopping me from achieving the things that I want to achieve. And I'm just saying no more. I am committed to doing all the things that I've said I'm committed to do. But I'm not going to put anything, put at least the thing that matters most to me at risk, which is crochet. And that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> it feels like a very, I don't know, adult discovery to have made, but an important discovery. And I'm 
obviously actions or words require action. At the end of the day, I can say these things a thousand times, but if I don't actually make any progress towards what I'm saying, then it's kind of falling onto deaf ears, but I am at this point committed. I really want to see me and this brand become what I imagine it to become. And I feel like I'm so close to like achieving those things that it would be silly to just kind of like continue as I am. There's obviously things that need to be re reworked, re re evaluated. And if I want to grow, it's important that I recognize those things and make it happen, essentially. I feel like I completely forgot to mention one of the things one of the things that happened yesterday and why the quality looks better, if you're curious, is I after me and my brother got back from the tire place and me and my mom had been on the phone about the clients, she was kinda like, Hey, like I've been wanting to get a new phone and you mentioned that you would buy my phone. So do you want to take care of all of that tonight? And so, thankfully, me and my brother ended up leaving the tire place in time to go to the store so that she could buy a new phone, and that was such an experience. People working at these cell phone companies, online, over the phone, and in person, what type of training are you receiving? Because the experience is chaotic no matter what platform or mode that you are communicating with them. It was such an experience. like. It was, it was, me and my mom were like, is this, is this the twilight zone? Like, <laughs> what is happening? But here nor there, she did end up purchasing, not the phone that she came in for, because it turns out that they didn't have it in stock, but she ended up getting a phone that she did like. I ended up purchasing her phone, which I'm so happy about, because it has so much storage, the camera is so much better, and it was getting to the point where people were roasting my iPhone 8 Plus. They were like, is that an Android? No. No, this is one of the top tier iPhones and the last one to have the Touch ID, which I do miss. I do really miss it. But yeah, that is the reason for the increase in quality, which is something I'm very happy about. Because, I'm sorry, I feel like this was, oh, there's two brown pieces. Okay, should I wrap this around the other brown piece? I just feel like I'm going to lose this little bundle thing. E -e 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 -e. Yeah, let's wrap it. The challenge now becomes trying to figure out how to fit all of this yarn here. Hmm. Now, some things that I'm considering. I don't think I'm going to actually be able to fit all of it here. However, I do know that my mom has this little storage cube little situation that was technically actually mine first. It's not 100% the most ideal because it, it has like the sides open. So I would really prefer if I can fit everything here. I do also have this little situation. And while I am using my ribbon more, I could probably figure out somewhere else to put it and to actually use these shelves. So with that in mind, let's commence. I think I'm going to just pop in me doing this for TikTok. Solve it. It's time to organize our new yarn. And no, I'm not talking about this beautifully organized yarn here or even this nice section of yarn here or even the yarn that you're sitting on top of. I'm referring to this very large amount of yarn that my friend recently gifted me. I might be thinking, Taylor, this shelf is pretty full. How? How are you going to fit all that yarn there? And my answer is that my mom just confirmed that I can take back one of my shelves. So we're going to fit as much yarn as can fit right here. And then, and then we're going to save the rest for that shelf. Now the only 
The only annoying thing about that shelf is that it doesn't have sides. So we're going to have to figure that out, but thankfully we do not have that option. So let's get moving. Okay, so I think we should get started with the pinks, the reds, and the yellows, as well as the purples, because I know I have space for that. These pinks, these reds, this is actually the same pink as pink I already have on my shelf right here. This I also already have here. Sits in this. Is this actually all attached? Yes. Okay. That is the one great thing about yarn. It is very stuff friendly. These reds, these in because they're already pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now this one is kind of being swallowed. Whew, that definitely looks stuffed in, but it is what it is. Let's figure out this one. It's actually not looking as stuffed as it is. We need to start using some of this. Anywho, let's move on to yellow. Some yellow. This might be hard to fit in, so I'm going to leave it out for now. I think I'm going to leave all of the cotton ones out and put it on the shelf that I'm going to get soon. Orange in at the same time. This yellow already is here. I'm going to put this in here. Nice. Now we have one more mustard yellow. It's not looking good for the fact that I have a lot of blue, but that'll work. What to do about orange? I feel like it would make the most sense, like here. Well, this one just kind of fills out of place. I think I'll put this somewhere else. It's like a really cool reflective yarn that I'm being tangled in. I hope the tag is somewhere back here. And it is. Anyways. This also feels kind of out of place. I think I'm going to put it aside. This is the blue that I would like to fit in. Not too much room to spare. Now I'm currently working on a project involving this. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that one out. And slide this in to replace it. Great. And then we're moving to our darker blues. So this blue, what to do? Put that in. It's not perfect, but at least everything fits. Okay, so I'm currently running into an issue where I actually have more green, this much green to put in hard to imagine being able to fit it in as it currently stands. Um, the only thing I could think to do is maybe just move the dark blues down. That won't bother me too much. Yeah, let's just move the dark blues down. <laughs> Slight issue. Okay, so I forgot that this board is actually a little bit not the sturdiest. Forcing it in is kind of not the move. Okay, so we can't bother that too much. Um, what to do, to do, 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 do. I mean, what I'm currently considering is I could just move all of this shinier yarn to its own organization because I have enough of it and just keep this all like your standard acrylic. Yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm really playing into my beautiful icy blue fantasy. I'll survive though. And also means I can put this back in. Which I'm grateful for. And come out. 
Let's see. Put the green in. Mm -hmm. Boom. Okay, that actually fits everything quite nicely, in my opinion. Yeah, so I took all of the Karen Simply Soft filling ones out of this level. These purples. We have the browns. These. Oh. How dare you guys? You forgot to tell me. I was missing blue. Mm -hmm. Okay, crisis averted. Let's finish out these browns. Mm -hmm. And then these are all the same. Boom. Okay, last but not least is black. And I'll come back where black and white, and I'll come back when it's done. Here is the finish by. I definitely feel like it looks better, but this is what we have to organize tomorrow. Get dressed with me for the Travis Scott concert, styling one of my NYTC handbags. I'm currently really undecided whether to do green, pink, or black, but let's get the outfit on and then style. So I'm thinking that for my top, it's kind of like rainy and like low 60s, upper 50s in Atlanta. So I'm thinking this cropped HBC hoodie with these Zara cargo pants. Very basic, very chill, and it'll match the rainy vibes. Okay, I feel like this essentially accomplishes the vibe I'm going for. It feels very comfortable and like I can sit or stand very easily in this. Plus, not that I'll be wearing it, but this does have a hood. Okay, now this is where things get a little bit testy. I have these two jackets and I'm very undecided if I want to do a lighter look or a darker look, but holding it against me, it's giving darker. I'm honestly not like the biggest fan of anybody, like enough to go to a concert. However, I saw that the tickets were very cheap for the concert. Like if we had went yesterday, we probably could have gotten okay seats, like the same seats we have tonight for $16. And instead I paid, oh, the seats instead I paid like $22 so prices were very doable I do like Travis Scott's music like I have a lot of it on my playlist would I say he's my favorite person but the music top tier so I think that'll be fun okay now I definitely am liking where this is going it's definitely giving the chill concert goer vibes I was hoping for and which ones I'm feeling I like these because it kind of brings out some of the colors and stuff but it's raining and I mean I'm already going for a low effort look so I feel like we should just go ahead and do these okay last but certainly not least we have to pick a bag because every single outfit has to feature something that I made show let's try them all on this would be the black i feel like the black could do it the arena that the concert that doesn't have any specific bag policies and i do want to hold my umbrella which would fit in, in one of these bags i actually really like the black okay contender then I was thinking if I wanted a pop of color, I could do the pink. Um, you know what? I don't hate it, but I wish it was more closer to this pink. You know, I'm not super sold. And then the last one, I'm not going to pull this up would be 
the green, which does have a strap, but I just don't feel like pulling it out, but we can pretend. Hmm. I feel like I do kind of like this the most. Like the black is cool, but I don't really need to bring that much stuff. I do wish the green was slightly more closer to this green, but yeah, I'm kind of feeling the green. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, now this feels a lot more put together. I really do like earrings, but if I can't sleep in them, I'm not gonna remember to put them in. So we'll see if this continues. But as I said, my umbrella perfectly fits into my bag. It does stick out a little bit right now because the strap is still inside, but easy peasy. Here is my finest, finest. Here is my final Travis Scott concert look. And I hope I have a good time. Bye, you guys. All right, I think that's the end to this vlog. Let me know how you feel about including like the chatty TikTok bitch just because I don't want you guys to miss out on like that because that's basically vlog content. I don't know, just let me know. Once again, one final look at my outfit for the concert tonight. I still have a lot of work to do, so let's see what I can get done in the next hour and a half, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys.